And it's specifically about the fact that there's been 111 of them in Manitoba so far, 27 still burning this morning. And data says, according to the province, 90% of the wildfires this season were caused by humans. Virginia Iglesias is an environmental data scientist and researcher at the University of Colorado Boulder. She specializes in climate and weather. She's been doing analysis uh, since the wildfires ripped through Los Angeles earlier this year. She says a number of factors from unattended barbecues to uh, sparks and arson make up a long list of human activity responsible for wildfires. And her research has found, um, well, we'll let her tell us that. Uh, She's with us now via Zoom. Good morning. Good morning. What are the other factors, first of all, that cause wildfires that are human activity? Human activity impacts every single aspect of fire. And fire is a very complex phenomenon, but it can be summarized into, into three components. For a fire to happen, we need fuel, we need that fuel to be dry, and we need ignition. Climate change has been making very extensive areas of the landscape very, very dry. Human activities have been increasing the availability of fuel, for instance, through fire suppression. There's more fuel accumulation in areas that shouldn't be as much fuel. And also we are adding fuel to the landscape. When we think about our homes, we think them as safe buildings where we live. But from a fire perspective, they are also fuel. So we are adding fuel to the landscape. And third, we are adding ignition. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, not at all. I, I'm wondering why. What, why, you know, I'm, it's kind of an astonishing 90% caused by humans when we look at the numbers in Manitoba. Why are people responsible for, for so many fires? Has it always been the case or have people assumed more responsibility over time or is it just because the landscape's so dry? Both. Uh, only recently did we learn that humans had such a big impact on ignition and if we think about fire it's been on the landscape for 400 million years right that's 200 million before dinosaurs it's been around and it can exist without us but it relies on lightning now we have people who are living closer to wildlands bringing their barbecues having campfires firework uh power lines that's a critical component of fire ignition. Um, cars parked on dry grass, mm, machines like uh, chainsaws. So anything that can cause a sparkle can start a fire. And with this, we are extending the fire season. So fires are not restricted to convective, fire, uh, convective storms as they were in the past. As we said, we, that we needed lightning in the past for a fire to start. Now fires can start whenever there are dry conditions and fuel because we humans are providing ignitions constantly. And your research that I alluded to has found that the wildfires are not only getting bigger, but more frequent. And uh, whiplash weather, as you call it, is so, is a factor. So we've experienced that here. That's when it's 30 degrees, and all of a sudden it's cold, you know, the week after these crazy forecasts we've had. Um, you, you have said that, th- that when we look at solutions um, to reduce human-caused fires, Um, that that there are a number of things that should be done, and some of it has to do with response plans. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Fires are here to stay, and we need to learn to live with fire. And for that, we need to shift from emergency response to careful data-informed planning. And there are steps that we can take. They're not easy, but it can be done. And they need to happen at multiple levels. So homeowners can help improve uh, and reduce the vulnerability of their homes by managing what we call the defensible space. That's the area around the house. And that mostly involves removing vegetation that could ignite near the home. Second, we can, we can build better. We can use fire resistant materials for for roofs and for decks, which are uh, areas that tend to ignite very easily. 
Um, sometimes we imagine that when a house burns, it's because flames are getting to the house. That's not necessarily the case. Most ha houses actually burn because of embers that travel from the front line and fall on a roof or any flat area like a deck. So if we improve the quality and the fire resistance of those areas, we can help protect our homes. Then evacuation is another key part of fire. We can help by removing vegetation along the roads so that escape is possible in the worst case scenario of a fire trapping communities. And then we need a fuel removal that needs to happen at the province or federal level. So we need integrated management of fuel and perhaps also regula regulations about when we can uh, do activities that could start fires. For instance, on days when the, high, when the fire potential is very high, perhaps we should not be playing with fireworks. Perhaps we should not be st starting a chainsaw. Yes. And those are decisions that need to be made. Thank you very much for being with us, Virginia. Appreciate your time. People can read more about your research online, and we appreciate you being with us today as our, our, our Manitoba continues to be under a state of emergency. Thanks for having me. That's Virginia Iglesias, Environmental Data Scientist and Director of Earth Lab, a research unit at the University of Colorado Boulder. Mm -hmm.